We like to welcome everyone, but most of all, we welcome the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. Amen. And so we're going to start our service today with a song, Holy Ground. You know, when Moses had his first encounter, his real encounter with God, he was approaching a bush that was totally cons uh, filled with fire, but it was not consumed. <coughs> and then a voice came out of that bush, and you know what that bush, what that voice said out of that bush? Moses, take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. Amen. All better. We're in a holy ground moment right now. Where two or more are gathered in his name, where is he at? In our midst. Mm -hmm. Holy ground. We have Amen. When I walk through the doors, I sense God's presence, and I knew this was a place where love abounds, for this is a temple, Yahweh. Beyond all measure. 
among us. We are so privileged, Father, to stand with the angels and praise you today. We're privileged, Father, to be able to have a relationship with you, to call out your name and know that in that name we have a strong tower. We're so grateful and thankful for everything you have given everything you are doing, and we're thankful, Father, for the new year that is set before us, and we make a commitment to you, Father, that we will let this year be better in our spirit than it was last year. We want to continue to regenerate ourselves more and more and more for the renewing of our mind and our spirit to be closer and more sanctified with you. Bless this service that we are having today. Bless all the worship, all the praise, all the sacrifices that are now being made to you. Please receive it, Father. And may you give your peace upon all of your people. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, part of the new year for a lot of people, even people that are in Christ, is they like to make resolutions. They want, they want a new year to represent a new, a new circumstance, a change. People say, oh, I'm going to lose a, a lot of weight here this year. I'm going to join the gym this year. I'm going to go do this this year. I'm going to try to be a better husband, a better wife, a better father. Right? We make all these resolutions. But when it comes with our walk with God, even though we may have already committed ourselves to Him, even though we're already in a relationship with Him, you know what we sometimes simply have to do? We have to let go of our baggage. 
Amen. Even Christians Amen. carry baggage. Yes. Right. Amen. Unforgiveness. That's right. Bitterness because of health problems. All kinds of issues. Problems with other people. We carry baggage. This next song we're getting ready to sing is telling us we need to trade all that ugly for something better. Amen. Amen. And let's use that as a primary resolution for us as a church. Let's let go of the nasty. Let's let go of the old. Let's let go of what's been hemming us down in sorrow and pain, whether it be in mind or body. And let us trade it for something that's a whole lot better. I'm trading my sorrows. <clears throat> I'm trading my sorrows I'm trading my shame I'm laying it down For the joy of the Lord That's what I'm going to do I'm trading my sickness I'm trading my pain And I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure and his joys gonna be my strength. Though my sorrow may last for the night, what? His joy comes with the morning. I'm trading my sorrow. Hallelujah! And I'm trading my shame. What am I gonna do? I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, devil take it, and I'm trading my pain, and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Confirm it. I say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Persecuted, not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, and his joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes with the morning. I'm trading my sorrows. Yes, I am. I'm trading my shame. Take it now. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yeah, I'm trading my sickness. Take it, and I'm trading my pain. Don't want that no more. And I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. No more sorrow. No more pain. Thank you, Lord. No more hiccups and hold-ups and hang-ups. <laughs> no more. Because right, I'm going to take the joy of the Lord and let it be yes, my yes. strength. Right. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you. How many of you have been set free? Amen. 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 
What if you, how many of you been set free and then you kind of got back in them chains and then set free again and got back in them chains? How many of you been back in the chains? Right. <laughs> Part of the joy that we just sang about, that we have traded for, Part of that joy is being able to testify the Lord delivered me. Amen. Amen. He set me free. Like we sung the other night. Put my feet on solid ground. Amen. Right. Thank you. Being able to testify that and tell others about that is is, is part of our joy. Amen. This next song is one of these let's go down to church songs. I'm free. If you have been delivered in any way, sing it. Sing it loud. Testify that you are delivered. Moving, moving, moving on the inside. Somebody. 
free at last. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. right now in heaven they're around the throne day and night 24 hours a day 7 days a week holy 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 are you Lord Yes. what we do here on church and what we do on Wednesday and what you may do in your own private homes that's just the practice session to what we're going to be doing up there Amen. when we get into his presence Amen. Let's sing this next song. Holy are you, Lord. I want you to envision heaven right now. I want you to envision. You've got all these people centered around this one lamb that's right there in the middle. And they're worshiping this lamb. All the souls are worshiping this lamb. May we be in that number. Can you hear the sound of heaven? Like the sound of many waters. It's the sound of worship coming from the throne. Hallelujah. There are cries of adoration as men from every nation lift their voice to make his glory known. Lift their voice to make his glory. 
Pray for our ministry here as we seek God for the directions to go in the various things. He is directing and prayer and, and he is directing and pray for provision to fulfill his calling. Pray for revival and the ability for us to move into other neighborhoods with tents and grill. Pray for January 6th that God's, God's will shall be done. Pray, pray, pray Amen. for this country and the freedom of the gospel. Amen. Resist the Antichrist spirit and do not submit to it. Keep Brother Rochelle, Sister Debbie and Karen, Brothers Brian and Keith and Matthew, Brother Shane and Sister Melissa, Joseph and Charlie and Renee, and Sister Carol and Sister Judy, as well as ministry leaders and families in thought and prayer. We all are struggling with our own battles, but he is greater and we will overcome. And if you're fighting any battle whatsoever, call me, I, I'll fight with you. I got battles too, we can battle it together. I like having prayer ministry over the phone. Amen. Amen. Pastor Pierce, would you like to give us a spotlight? Yes. I was sitting this week and uh, a couple of things that came to mind about the new upcoming year that we have. One was, where is our mindset? Think about that a moment. I want to welcome, are we coming? Yeah. Yeah. He has a, he has a video over there. He's got a good time. I want to welcome all those in Africa, all those in California. This morning, I want to welcome everyone who's come this morning. God has you here for a reason. You're not here by just chance. Uh, there's a reason behind everything God does. And he's trying to steer us in a, a different place. Go off in a different way. To see things in a different light. And when he was speaking to me about this new mindset, I was I was watching a Kung Fu movie. I like Bruce Lee's movies, you know. I think he's He's, he's, he's out there, but you know, just come through. I like the way they have their stuff. But Bruce Lee <coughs> had a different mindset. One of the greatest uh, martial arts person that was ever in the world. And the reason he was is because he had a different mindset. When he went to strike, he didn't strike to hurt them or kill them. He struck in self-defense, but also he counter-striked. That means when he hit that person, slapped him upside the head, he also popped their arm here to make it draw back. Mm -hmm. There was always a counter-strike with his foot. He would kick him in the chin. He would do something other than one strike. He would do a double strike. And when he would, when he would do that, he had a different mindset. They couldn't comprehend him because he hit them in two different ways. So that is our mindset today. We need to be thinking in a different mindset than the world has. We need to be thinking in two different areas. Right. God has saved me. And God has a way for me to go. God has already put in place for us something. The world wants us to think one thing. Destruction. Hate. And God is saying, no, it's about love. Mm -hmm. It's about sharing with others, giving to others, helping others. Do we see ourselves in this type of mindset? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what I'm, I'm here today to ask you. It says, what is our mindset for the new year? Are we thinking in two different dimensions here? God's dimension and our dimension with God. Are we thinking, hey, are we, are, we, are we attacking the things that are coming against us? Are we coming against the enemy? Because we're going to fight. Mm -hmm. The word says we're going to fight a battle. Right. And it's the devil. 
but we're fighting for a greater cause here. It's for the kingdom of God. For the riches of heaven to be given to us one day. Mm -hmm. Upon the true fight. Amen. Holding it. Pressing toward the mark. Amen. We're, we're pressing toward heaven. We're not pressing toward nothing. Right. There's a greater thing in our life that we need to be searching for. Heaven is that place. God is that place. Jesus Christ was sent to be our, what you might say, to take our place. Our substitute. That we might have that death in heaven. That we might be forgiven of the sins of this world. We all were born in the sins of Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. But through Christ, He pardoned us. <coughs> Think about it like this. It says, how do we get a new mindset? By His Word. His Word renews our mind, our spirit. It says, do we even think about the mindset we have now? These are a few things I wrote down I wanted to speak out. Just to get us to think on a different term. It says, so let's come together at the throne of God and ask Him for a new mindset. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why do we look to man in this world for something to change in our lives? The way we walk, the way we talk, the way we act, the way we live, how we live, what we live with, mm -hmm. what kind of job we have, what kind of home we have. Why do we keep looking at this world to take care of us? Mm -hmm. When God is standing there and saying, look to me. Amen. And I promise you, when you look to Him and put Him first, Amen. all right, Lord, you should have. You change everything. Amen. See, we've got to change our minds. We've got to look to God. And I'm not talking to all those gods out there. You know, you've got the sun god. You've got the god of, of, of Hercules. You've got the god of the sea, the god of the moon, the god of the star. I'm talking about God wants us to come to a different place in mindset. There's only one God. Amen. 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 Yes. Him. He's a jealous God. Yes. And all those other gods that people put with God create confusion with God. The enemy Amen. knows how to put something up there to distract you from the true God. Yep. Amen. And distract right. you from where you need to be in yep. life with God. He knows how to get between right. you and God. Oh, yeah. yep. The God of drugs that I've done. The God of alcohol that I've done. Mm -hmm. The God of, of, of lust I've done. Mm -hmm. All these things are of this world come to destroy us. God says, turn to me. Turn to me. He said, I'll take all that away. I want to make a, a prayer this morning for all of us to have a new mindset this year. I'm going to read a scripture here. Philippians 2 and 5. It said, Let this mind, which also in Christ, mm -hmm. be in you. Let this mind, the mind of Christ. So, if we think about who is Christ, who is born of a virgin died on the cross, and rose from the game. Today, sits beside the Father in heaven. If we're in Him and He's in us, then where are we? We're sitting with Him beside the right. Father in heaven, right? That's right. Why don't we walk like that? Uh -huh. We're sitting with the King in heaven because we're saved, sanctified, filled over there. Are we walking in that thought? <coughs> Do we believe it? That God is with us. God gives us favor. God looks out for us. Yes. God supplies yes. our needs. Yes. Do we believe it? Yes. This is yes. not just something that, that's just something I'm talking about here. I'm talking about my God has made a way for my wife and I. My God has made a way for just his wife and his family. Amen. My God has made a way for Kathleen. I don't know about the rest of them, but has God made a way for you? Yes. Does he yes. show you the favor yes. in, your, in, in, your, in your jobs, that's right. yes. your family that's life? Your children? Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. This is more than just a 
a thing I'm talking about. I'm talking about something glorious that yes, God amen. gives us all. That's if we right. just reach out to him and say, Lord, I grab home. Yes, Do you want something better? Do you want something greater in your life? Or are you just going to settle for what the world wants to offer you? I'm trying to tell you, God has it. And until we can reach out and grab his hands and say, Lord, help me, we won't have it. We'll walk in vain. We're walking out of the glory of God. His glory is trying to tell us, come unto me all right. you revelation. I will right. give you that. He's going he's to part the Red Sea for it if we will listen. Amen. Right, amen. He did it for the Israelites, didn't he? Yes. yes. Then Moses yes. parted the sea when God said, blow it, do it, and it come apart. That's it right. parted and they walked around on dry land. How did that happen? Only God, the oh great God. God that we serve. Oh How did it happen other than that? You ever heard the wind blowing that would just blow the wind the sea back and open it up and drive the land where you could walk through to the other side? Have you ever heard anybody else no. do that? No. Did the other God did it? I hadn't seen him. So who, who's God you're serving today? Amen. Who are we Amen. serving today? That's right. He's been seeking holy, holy, holy about the God. Lord, look at look at look at that thing. Look. Woo! Oh, I'll tell you. Hallelujah. Are y'all here? Holy ground. Mm -hmm. Amen. Every step I take with him is holy. Yes, amen. Holy. Holy. Amen. amen. Holy. Holy. Amen. I thought I thought I was doing something. No. It was him doing before me. Amen. He said, I go before you. You serve me. Everywhere I walked holy. Amen. We was in Africa. 2014 ministry. And I got took to this little bitty small church behind the uh, airport in Kenya. By myself, me and my wife got in a car with a man with no hands. And he drove a straight drive car with no hands. He was the chief deputy of the chief of police. And he drove us to his church way on the other side of Kenya. And we rode, we rode, we kept looking over his shoulder at the needle, the gas needle. <coughs> it was on it the whole time. And he kept driving, 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 driving. And I said, you pull in up here with us, you can't see it. We can pray for it. <laughs> but when we got to this little church, it was way up and behind a bunch of buildings up in there. But when we got out, the people of the church greeted us, me and my wife, and they had took and put a little path of gravel about a foot wide all down through the ditch, all around this building, all the way back up here around this little hill and back down behind this little building. We weaved and wobbled through all these little paths, around all these buildings, through all these ditches, little path of gravel all the way around. And when we got to walk in the church, there's a path right down the center of the church. And they said, come in right there. And I'm standing there, and the Lord speaks to me. He said, Jeff, you're standing on holy ground. And I'm sitting there, he said, reach down and grab some of them rocks. He said, these are holy rocks. They're sanctified by me. And I reached out and grabbed some. I put my coat today in my coat at home, and it's still there <laughs> since 2014. The rocks are still in my coat because they were something God spoke to me were holy. Mm -hmm. So do we, do, we, do we have the mindset of walking in holiness? <coughs> God needs to help us walk in holiness. I think when the world cloud our judgment, our minds, our hearts, so much. And God says, turn to me, walk in holiness. You have what I offer you. God offers everyone. Yes, amen. We just have to be willing to receive it. Amen. Amen. But I went down after picking up the rocks. Me and my wife sat down, grabbed my little tablet I always minister with. Things I write down, not give me a message before I sit down. And I sit there that morning and I had this mission. I got rid of my family right now. I'm sitting there. And every time I tried to go to read that thing, it wouldn't come. Finally, I just did that right there. And I said, y'all, I'm going to go by the Spirit of God. And I let in off the Word of God. And I'm telling you what, when I let in, them people were astounded. When I got done, that bishop looked at me. The one that took it there, he was the chief of police and I wrote it. He had his chief inspector. He said, how did you know? I said, no what? He said, how did you know that our church had a division? 
And most of the people with the money took the money and left the church. And this is what is left. He said, you opened up the message and it was about coming together in unity. He said, how did you know this? I said, God would let me read that. He made me go to something different right at the last second. See, God has a way of showing us the lead. He knows what he's doing. Are we listening to him? Amen. Yes, we hear his voice. That's right. And let me tell you, he's loud and clear. That's right. He speaks loud and clear. This morning, when he spoke to me about this different mindset, I didn't mean to carry on so long. No, 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 that's okay. You know, he spoke to me about this mindset. We have to change our mindset. Mm -hmm. We have to change something. Which way we're going. We have to. The enemy's fighting us all. To That's bring right. us somewhere else. So true. You think about Paul when he said, when Jesus looked at him and said, Paul, I want you to go to the road called Straight. When Paul was spoken <laughs> to by, by, by Jesus and on that road, after he blinded him, he said, take the road called Straight. Why did he tell him to go down the road called Straight? Because he was going to straighten his path as he followed God. Are we on straight path today? Are we walking in the straight and narrow, as it's called here at the song? Are we believing there's a straight path that God has for us that we can walk in and be at peace and joy and harmony with Him? That all the things around us, beside us, it's just none and void. Are we walking in that place in the Bible says? Do we know when the enemy comes? We go, we can hit him three places and not even know it. Right. Right? Right. 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 God gives us power. He said, I'll give you power to tread on the scorpion's head. That's right. And no harm shall come to you. God says, I give you power. Do you believe we have that kind of power? Yeah. That's what Amen. we need to understand. That's what we need to read His Word and find out. What does your Word say for me, Lord? Mm -hmm. Find the Bible. Read it. Read it. You may not understand it right away. Say, Lord, help me understand. But the more you read, it will start going click, 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 click. A dimension of God will open up into your mind, body, and spirit. And it will blow your mind once you find out. Many nights I walk about the bedroom my wife. Get up, you gotta hear this. God showed me something great. Something I didn't see before. I read that verse a hundred times and everything. Mm -hmm. He whispers in the reading backwards. What? Reading backwards? When I did, it looked like a flower. And the greatest revelation I've ever seen come out of the word of God. One verse. Mm -hmm. Not many, just one. One was so supernatural, blew my mind. It gave me a want and a desire to deep deeper. Amen. I want to read this uh, prayer right here that uh, my wife and I, a friend of ours, had talked to us about. And it was a prayer that Paul prayed to the Ephesians church. And I want to read it out. And I want y'all to listen. And I'm going I'm to I'm put us in words of you in, in it. But this, this prayer is for all of us. It's for all of us taking different mindset today. I want to read this. I wish I had some glasses. Diane, you got your glasses? I've lost my glasses somewhere, y'all. I'd ask you to stand with right? <laughs> You ain't got nothing. Let me see if I can make it. Maybe I can do that. Let me just place one I can see. I just have to cross out. Here, 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 come. Leave these to yours, man. Look, I lost my glasses. I'm not lying. That's been her first. There you go. You can see that. <laughs> 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 I've never had my words. 
Let's go here. It's Ephesians 4 and 16. Through 21. It says, oh, I'll say it started at 15. It says, Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he, Christ, would grant us according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might of Christ's spirit in our inner man. Yes. Mm. That Christ may dwell in our hearts. Yes. Says your, but our hearts by faith. That you be rooted. Mm -hmm. That means you know where you stand. Mm -hmm. Grounded, standing on the word of God. In love. Jesus is about love. Amen. Love one another as I have loved you. It says, may be able to may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height. And to know the love of Christ, which passes which passes knowledge, yes. that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Yes. Yes. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever think or ask according to the powers that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages of the world without end. All the ages of the world. Amen. Without end. There is no end. It says without end. That's right. We're praying this because there never will be an end once we're in heaven. Right. It's going to go on and on and on. Hallelujah. There will be no end. Because we have a promise. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to think about what I'm saying today, this week. Take it with you. Meditate on it in your mind. Think about what I'm saying. Remember. Uh, the Kung Fu guy. Okay. Remember that. We have to walk in the gun food. And his name is Jesus. He's our provider. He's our protector. He's our leader. He's our comfort. Without him, we'll fall apart. He's the glue that holds us together. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have y'all got something? I like think that? we need yes. to make a poster of Pastor Jeff going, yeah. Holy Spirit! Amen. Evangelist Diane, will you come yes. forward and Let's say a prayer over our offering? We do have an offering that's been here so far. Yes, Lord. this offering, Father Lord. Yes, Jesus. I ask you, Father Lord, to bless each and every one of them, Father Lord. Bless them abundantly, Father Lord. Yes. Just not in finances, but in, in the spirit. Yes, Father, Lord. Lord. Yes. Inside. Because that's where you're at, the inside. Of us, I love you and I thank you, God. more song we're going to sing before we, we give our word for the day. Hey, and Pastor Jeff's spotlight was so powerful. That, that's, yes. a, that's right there with a word in itself, wasn't it? Amen. Amen. I wish I was that good. Oh, you're a kung fu preacher, right? <laughs> 
Okay. Well, that's odd. taught us how to live, taught us how to carry ourselves, taught us about your kingdom and what we were to do to have a relationship with you. And then that body was massacred, it was beaten, it was spit upon, it bled. And we do not forget what that body represents. And we ask, Father, that in our bodies, in our life, that we will follow Him, that we will not defile our bodies, but that we will do our best to stay holy before You and to follow the Lamb of God. We thank You, Father, for the blood. That blood was so precious. That liquid organ, Father, Jesus was the greatest organ donor that ever existed because He gave all of it. Yes, he bled to death on that cross. And he did it because he loved us and because he loved you. May we never forget that love. And may we never forget that we can have remission of our sins if we come to you in forgiveness. That we will not forget. Thank you for this communion, Father. May we be blessed and nourished by it. And may our spirit be, be moved, Father as we uh, have this fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Lord, as we take this bread that represents your body for the sacrifice that you made on the cross for our sins, Lord, take ye and eat. I repent of my sins, Lord. Yes, Jesus. And ask that you to forgive me. Yes, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Cup bears. <laughs> <laughs> This next song is very appropriate to what we just did. Is it no, Jesus great. is the center of our joy. Yes, amen. <laughs> Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Jesus, 
said to Moses, Behold, I come to you in the thick cloud, and the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. So Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. Let them be ready for the third day, for on the third day the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. You shall set bounds for the people all around, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that you do not go up to the mountain or touch its base. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. Mm -hmm. Not a hand shall touch him, that he shall surely be stoned or shot with an arrow. Whether man or beast, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, they shall come near the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, Be ready for the third day. Do not come near your wives. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings and thick cloud on the mountain and he, the sound of the trumpet was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. <coughs> Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God. They stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder. Moses spoke and God answered him by voice. Then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain and Moses went up. The sound of the chauffeur is the title of this message. My Father in heaven, I pray. Yes, Lord. I pray that it will not be my thoughts or my words. It will be your thoughts and your words. I pray, Father, that in this word we will get a clear understanding of things. I pray that there will be something in this word that will specifically speak and minister to the needs of someone who's sitting here today. 
And I'm praying, Father, for there to be a revival. Revival in our hearts, a revival in our spirit, a revival in this church, a revival in this land. I pray that as every a church here in America and around the world praise you today, this first Sunday of the new year, I pray that you accepted it. And I pray, Father, that as we worship you now in your word, that you will speak loud and clear to us. Anoint my mouth and anoint the ears of those who will hear this word. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Many of us who live in Western cultures tend to take it for granted that the new year has always started on January 1st. That's not true. The ancient Babylonians and Romans celebrated their new year in March. The Chinese celebrate theirs somewhere between January 21st and February 21st, and they party for 15 days. Maybe that's the only time in the year they're allowed to party. <laughs> Ethiopians do theirs in September. Muslims have their New Year's in November. And then there are the Thai, Thai people who celebrate in April. Do you know how they observe the coming in the New Year in, in Thailand? According to one of my sources, they throw water on each other. They will use garden hoses, buckets of water, and even squirt guns. But perhaps the most important New Year's celebration ever was held in the Old Testament Israelites around the month that we call September. They call this month Tishri. They began with their Feast of Trumpets and ultimately culminated their rejoicing on the Day of Atonement. Now the Jews today call this New Year celebration Rosh Hashanah, and they welcome the New Year with a shofar. This is a shofar. I ordered it from Israel a couple of years ago. It came with a bag. It's hanging there against the window there. It costs about a hundred dollars. Now you can get one twice the length. For anywhere between two or three hundred dollars. For that kind of money, you would think that they would throw in a couple of lessons on how to play it. <laughs> but they don't. <laughs> this is a ram's horn. In Jewish culture, the rabbis have made several observations about the horn's role in Rosh Hashanah. They say they blow the shofar at, uh, at Rosh Hashanah as a way of signifying the need for folks to their need for repentance. And they say that the curve in the horn reflects the posture of a person who bows before God. On the second day of Rosh Hashanah, that's the ten-day festival that they have, they read the story of Abraham about his attempt to sacrifice his son on the mount. But God, as we know the story, intercedes by supplying what? The ram. A ram. Mm -hmm. The ram in the bush. Mm -hmm. The rabbis seem to believe the ram reminds one of Abraham's willing sacrifice of that which was most precious. Now these reasons, the need for repentance, the reflection of a repentant man, and the significance of the ram in Abraham's story, they say are why God used the chauffeur in Israel's history. That's why they say it. Well, oddly enough, God never used the chauffeur that way. I mean, there's not anything necessarily wrong with those thoughts of the rabbis. It's just what, that God really had a much more powerful message with this thing. <clears throat> For example, in Exodus chapter 19, the text that we used just a few moments ago, we found Moses was has led the people of Israel to Mount Sinai, where God gave them his law. Let's read verses 16 through 19 again. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain, and the sound of a trumpet was very loud. 
so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended <clears throat> upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the blast of the <clears throat> trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by voice. trumpet. That's what this was. Now who's playing the trumpet in what we just read? Who is playing the trumpet? Who is playing the chauffeur? I'm pretty sure that chauffeur was blown by an angel. And that horn was not a pretty sound. It was a scary thing. Exodus chapter 20 Notice verses 18 and 19, if you have your Bibles. It says, Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Then they said to Moses, You speak with fire, and we hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. You see, it was such a scary experience. The people trembled and they pled with Moses not to have to listen to God. Now, this little story is related in another part of the Bible. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 to 21, it reflected on that day telling Christians what we need to do in reference to it. Hebrews chapter 12, 18 to 21 for you have not come to the mountain that may be touched, and that it burned with fire, and to blackness and darkness and tempest. Notice verse 19. And the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. Mm -hmm. Sounds kind of what, like what we just read in Exodus, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why use this trumpet? What was going on here? Why use this chauffeur in this way? Well, here is my guess is that this chauffeur represented God's trumpet of power. That's what this represented. Amen. It represented God's power. You see, God had just freed Israel from the slavery in Egypt. Right? Amen. He, bought, he brought them up out of their captivity, and he had now brought them to the mountain to do what? To receive his law. Now, were these laws optional? Did they get to vote on these laws? No. Nope. Did they get to decide, I'll do that one, but I don't really want this one over here? Mm -hmm. No. No. In fact, this whole light and sound show at the mountain was God's way of declaring, I am God, and you're not. Amen. If you decide to be my people, I will be your leader, and these commandments will be a mandatory to you. Amen. The chauffeur that day was God's way of announcing, Your king has Amen. come. Amen. Amen. Donald Trump is right now, currently, the president of the United States. At least until January 19th. <coughs> Every time he walks in a room for official appearance, the band plays Hell to the Chief. What happens when people hear that song? They stand up. They get up. They stand. In the same way, when they play God Save the Queen in the presence of the Queen of England, everyone is called to stand at attention. Why? Because standing shows respect, and this also shows that the person they stand to honor is to recognize as the leader of the nation. 
What happened on this day at Mount Sinai was God was using the chauffeur to call his people to stand up and to recognize that he is king. The sound of the chauffeur declared that their God was powerful, fearsome, and worthy of obedience. Now the next time we read about the chauffeur in scripture is in the book of Joshua. The Israelites have just crossed the Jordan River and they've come to the walls of Jericho. Jericho was a formidable fortress. It was built to withstand a siege of weeks, months, or even years. How long did it take for Israel to take that city out? Seven days. Do you remember the instructions God gave Israel? Joshua chapter 6 verse 3. Amen. You shall march around the city. All you men of war, you shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. Now, let's go to verse 10 and notice what Joshua told them. You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, Shout, then you shall shout. Not a sound, not a word, not a single noise except... Guess what? What God made every day a noise... Every day, the Israelites marched around the city and blew this thing right here. As the army of Israel marched around Jericho, the priests blew continuously on the shoulders. Joshua 6, 9. So day after day, Israel marched around the city, made no sounds except the blowing of the shofar. Day after day after day, it was a scary sight for the inhabitants of Jericho who were already uneasy because of the tales they had heard of God destroying the Egyptian army at, at the Red Sea. <coughs> now there was this massive army silently marching the sounds of the chauffeur day after day after day for six long days. But the seventh day, it was different. Joshua 6, 4, and 5. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. The priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall come up every man straight before him. walls collapsed and the city fell to them. But who won the battle of Jericho? Was it Joshua that won the battle? No. Was it Israel that won the battle? Mm -hmm. No sir, no ma'am. It was God. The blowing of the chauffeur declared this wasn't about Joshua. It wasn't about Israel. This was all about God. Amen. And when the city fell, it belonged totally to God. Amen. Israel was to burn everything in the city and take nothing out for themselves because this was not their victory. It was God's victory. We do not read much about chauffeurs again until the book of Judges. Israel had been disobedient to God, and so he delivered them into the hands of the Midianites for seven long years. But then one day, the angel of God paid a call on a man named Gideon. He said, Gideon, you're going to go to war for me, and you're going to defeat the Midianites. Now, that was not a small task. We're told that when the Midianites made their yearly raid on Israel, God, Judges chapter 6, verse 5, Coming in as numerous as locusts, both they and their camels were without number, and they would enter the land to destroy it. 
Now no man in his right mind would try to take them on. But here God was calling on Gideon to go out and fight them. Gideon tried to talk his way out of the job, but God eventually prevailed. How do you re now, do you recall how many men God had Gideon lead into this fight? 300. 300. He actually started out with an army of 10,000 men, but God sent all the 300 home. Notice what the Lord said to Gideon in Judges chapter 7, verse 2. The Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. And do you remember how the battle was won? Judges 7, 16, and 18. Gideon divided the 300 men into three companies and put trumpets, chauffeurs, into the hands of all the men and emptied jars with torches inside the jars. Notice their instructions in verse 18. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then also blow the trumpet on every side of the whole camp and say, The sword of the Lord and Gideon's. <laughs> and you remember what happened? Judges 7.22. When the 300 blew the trumpets, the Lord said, Every man's sword against his companion throughout the whole <coughs> Who won the battle? Was it Gideon? Was it 300? No, sir, no ma'am. As you said, it was God. It was his hand that brought the victory. And once again, it was the sound of the chauffeur that announced God's power. Every time the chauffeur was blown in Scripture, it seemed to declare, I am your God. It's my power. It's my might. It's my strength that will save you. Amen. Or as it said in Psalm 18, verse 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, mm -hmm. my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Amen. The Jews to this day herald in their new year with a chauffeur. In the Old Testament, this was called the Feast of Trumpets. And they blew chauffeurs and silver trumpets every day for ten days. Day after day after day. I read one scholar who said that he was puzzled the Bible didn't say more about the meaning of this Feast of Trumpets. Well, that scholar may not have understood the meaning of that feast, but I'm pretty sure I know what that was all about. In the Old Testament, this was the beginning of the New Year. And when they blow their horns, they weren't just blowing the trumpets as if they were some kind of noisemaker, like people do bringing in the New Year. Remember, the chauffeur was used in Scripture to point to God and His power. Well, guess what took place right after the Feast of Trumpets? Do you remember? It was the Day of Atonement. This was the day when God forgave the sins of the people. Now, God would do that regularly throughout the years. People brought their sacrifices to the temple. But this particular day was special. On this day, the Day of Atonement, God had the high priest offer a special sacrifice for the sins of the entire nation and another sacrifice for his own sins. It was the day of the year where God forgave the sins of the nation. It was a day of starting over. Amen. A lot like our New Year's festivals. Amen. And the sins were forgiven because God made it happen. Amen. It was not about the people's righteousness. It was not about their good deeds. It was because God was willing to forgive them of their sins. Amen. It says in Psalm 103, verses 8 to 13, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not 
always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. Amen. You know what the trumpet, the feast of trumpets was all about? It was announcing the most important event in his, Israel's history. The day that God forgave their sins. Amen. Amen. It was a time of great rejoicing. The same way Jesus said, there's a great rejoicing in heaven when a sinner is saved. What does Luke 15 and 7 <coughs> say? I say to you that likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. And it's almost as if a chauffeur sounds in the distance every time a sinner believes. <coughs> Every time a sinner repents, <laughs> confesses Jesus as his Lord, <laughs> and seals the deal by allowing themselves to be watered, or I should say oh, baptized, <laughs> in the waters of baptism. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was getting rid of some of the, uh, the, 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 what do you call it? When you, when you refine silver, the dross. That was getting rid of the dross. The dross. <laughs> it is Jesus that forgives our sins. It is Jesus who changes our lives. It is Jesus that gives us a reason to live every day of every year. Mm -hmm. There's a story about a little girl who proudly wore a shiny cross on a chain around her neck. You see little children do that. It's precious to see that. One day she was approached by a man who said, her little girl, don't you know that the cross Jesus died on wasn't beautiful like the one you're wearing? It was an ugly wooden thing. To which the little girl replied, yes, I know. But they told me in Sunday school that whatever Jesus touches, he changes. Amen. Amen. Jesus touched her and changed her. Has Jesus touched you? If so, he has changed you. Yeah. Glory! <laughs> now I'm losing my ability. <laughs> this is not easy. <laughs> I want to close with one more thought. You may have already thought of this yourself, but there's one more time the trumpet is blown in Scripture. In preparation, I almost mm -hmm. forgot it myself. Do you know when the trumpet is blown? Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 52. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, if I can do it, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, it is. It's the last chauffeur That's what we say that will be. declaring the second coming of Christ. Yeah. It's all about Jesus coming for us. It's about him coming back in power and in might. It's about his desire to reclaim his people. At the beginning of the Jewish New Year, I want you to remember that the chauffeur tells us it isn't about us. 
It's about God. That's right. Amen. And about what His people and His might and His mercy can do in our lives. Yes, we need to decide, is it about us? No. Or is it about God? Uh, back here in this month of January, back about three years ago, I joined a gym. <coughs> need to join it again. I'm actually still a member. I need to go. <laughs> the employees behind the counter said that it would be crowded for the next few weeks. But then they smiled and said it would thin out as people began to waver in their commitment and their New Year's resolution. <laughs> Do you know why people give up on their New Year's resolutions? Because the resolution is about them. That's why. And their resolutions will ha hold out as, only as long as they can stay enthused about what it is that they want. But by contrast, if we make our resolution all about God, mm -hmm. it will be different. That's right. Because now what you do will be done to please Him. And by His might, and by His power, and by His mercy, you will succeed. Right, amen. <laughs> uh, oh, I forget. You know, you know what it's supposed to sound like. <laughs> you know, we believe what I just said so strongly here. That's why at the end of most services... <laughs> We open up the altar. Sometimes we need God's power blown over our lives. <laughs> if you want to claim your victory, <coughs> tap into His power. Yes, I'm going to ask you to come forward. Come forward. Let's claim the power of God over your life. Anybody here want that today? Amen. You want God's power in your life? You want God's power in your life? Amen. You want God's power in your life? Amen. Come forward. Claim that power. Amen. May the power of God blow over your life. Amen. Anybody want it? Amen. Come forward. Amen. Father, I lift up these that came to the altar, and I lift up even those who are still sitting in their seats. Father, we need your might. We need your power blown over us, Father. We know that one day Jesus is going to come and return. There's going to be a beautiful trumpet blast. And we pray, Father, that when it happens, we hear it loud and clear, and we will know what's about to happen. I'm praying in the name of Jesus, Father. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that we will glorify you on that day. I pray that we will be in that number who will be gathered, that we will go up to be with our Master, that we will be part of his eternal purpose, and we'll be there, Father, to see all the glorious things come upon this earth. Father, we want to be in that number. But in the meantime, we live in a world that weakens us, Father. Our faith gets weakened. Our, our, our strength gets weakened, Father. We get tempted. We have all these things that we have to contend with. Our imperfect flesh. We have the pressures of other people. And we have that old enemy, Father, who constantly uh, whispers in our ear these lies that, that, that brings deceit and deception and, and brings all this ugliness into our thoughts, into our hearts. But, Father, we know that the power the, the, the power that you put in us is greater than anything that's coming against us. 
And I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus, Father, that we will live in that power, that we will rebuke the enemy's efforts, that we will rebuke the devil, we will rebuke sin, we will rebuke the temptations, we will rebuke these things, that we will not succumb, that we will be strong, that we will come off victorious in the victory. Yes, Father, we need the victory. We have the victory. We glorify you for the victory. And we're just praying in a mighty way, Father, for that power to rest upon us. And that we're able to speak with boldness these things. As we come against people in the world today who's very confused in their theology, who doesn't understand your power or your morals, we pray, Father, that you will embolden us to speak out against these things, to speak out against heresy, to speak out against things that are not true, that we will not be afraid, Father. It's about bringing people to correction. We want, we love people, Father. We want everyone to be in that number who will hear that trumpet call and who will come forth in glory. We want everyone to be in that, Father. Not just a few, but everyone. So, Father, use us as instruments to go forward and help others to bring them to, 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 to hearing that sound of that trumpet. To bring them to hearing the sound of the glorious things that you have promised. And they we walk in the truth. Walk in the victory. Walk in the blood of Jesus Christ. We give you glory. We thank you, Father, for us new here. We thank you for putting us out. Putting us out here, Father, so that we can be light shiners. People will see the light. Use us as these beacons and make great and mighty things happen to your glory and your praise. Father, I lift up every soul right here within the sound of my voice. I pray, Father, for power to be put upon them, for strength to be put upon them. Father, give them glory. Give them, give them, give them, let them see a glimpse of that glory, Father. May they feel the power of your Holy Spirit. Put healing, Father, in their bodies in their minds, in their hearts, right there in their body, Father. Cleanse them, Father. Heal them, Father. Father, I'm praying, Father, that anything that is binding them, that they'll let go of it, that you will break that chain, and they will see the glory of God shine upon them, and that we will see the glory of God in their lives. Bless us, Lord. Bless us in a mighty way, Father. We need your spirit, that holy, sweet, holy spirit. Glory! Thank you, Father, for that spirit. The Spirit of God that moves in us. The gifts that come with it. We thank you for it, Father. And may we use them all for your glory. All for your praise. We give you honor this day. We give you honor this year. We profess, Father. We say and we decree that 2021 will be a year that we will go forward with more boldness. And whatever may happen, we will walk in your truth. And we will not let the enemy dismay. Anyway, thank you, Father, for what you have done. Thank you for this life. We give you glory, honor, and praise. It is all in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. I want that power. We need that power. Hallelujah. Give us that power. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let them know that something great is changing. Something great in the name of Jesus. For the trouble of the Lord is blowing. Yes, Lord. Hear His voice. Hear His calling. We thank you, Lord, today. Holy Spirit, have your way in people's lives. Oh, right here today. Have your, have your way right now in our lives. Lord, have your way in our spirit. Lord, have your way in our lives. Have your way in our home, in our family. Lord, we call on you right now in the name of Jesus. We just have you what you're going to do. We just have you what you're going to do. We just have you what you're going to do. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
us have the wound to go. Let him give us our legs to run. Yes, the corpse yes, is coming. Give it to us. Lord, we're glorifying you. For the souls out here that need salvation, Lord. Lord, we pray for the, the way. We, need we pray for the truth. Yes. We pray for the, the yes. way and the right to be there for them, Lord. We need Lord, touch their hearts. Touch our hearts. We need to us. do what your will is to help them come to Christ. Yes. Lord, we pray for them. The ones preparing, Lord, for the source, for the waters, for the next seekers, the ones who seek me, Lord. So pray for the ones out here right now today, Lord. Open up their hearts and minds, Lord. Open up a new dimension in their spirits. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. We bind anything coming out of their hearts and minds and spirits right now. In Jesus' name, we the power of the Holy Spirit to have way. Yes. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, right here today. Lord, open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings yes, and Jesus. that no man can, can comprehend, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the needs of the church, the needs of the missions around the world. Lead us and guide us, Lord. Keep us in your way. For we know you have great and mighty things for us to do. Use us. Help us humble ourselves and be willing, Lord. Willing us to be used by you and your spirit. Holy Spirit, lead God. Holy Spirit, teach us. Holy Spirit, have your way in our lives. Right here in the church, Lord. Let us go forth in a mighty way for the new year, Lord. Lord, bring the souls to Thank you, Lord. Show us, Lord. Lord, give us a, a stronger spirit of discernment in our lives and our be around us and with us in every walk, in every place we go, Lord. That we not be led by diverse spirits, but by the Spirit of God. We just thank you, Lord, we praise you right now. In Jesus' name. In thank you, Lord. We honor you today. Yes, well, this day is a new day. From this day forward, we walk in your home, yes, in your way, in your sight. Help us, O oh Lord, to do thy will more and more every day. Amen. 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 I love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for this opportunity we have. Thank you for allowing us to worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just pray that you will work in us to be new creatures. Renew us every day, Father. Touch us every day. May that beautiful Holy Spirit continue to work in us. Yes, Lord Jesus. So that we can be who you want us to be. Yes, Lord. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Yes, Lord. As we go forth, Father. Anoint us with your spirit. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.